holy? Do you believe it? And what's the next word? Unblameable. That can't be true. Come on. Are you serious? Really? Do you believe it? I don't think we act like we believe it. I don't think that we live like we believe it. Have you seen people get excited about an election? They really believe in their guy or their gal or whatever. I mean, they're just pumped. Man, and when they win, they're woo! We're on top of the world. And when the one on the other side loses, what do they They hurt, don't they? They hurt. You believe like that? I don't know. I'm really not too sure. You gotta ask yourself that. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have what? Heard. You've heard it, but did you listen? And which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I call and made a minister. Brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say here today is spiritually speaking, we eat with our eyes. Okay? We eat with our eyes. Are your eyes open? Are your eyes open? God has a voice, and He wants to speak to you. Sometimes it's not audible, but He does speak. Sometimes it is audible. God has mysterious ways, but if you are not listening, how can you hear? And if God speaks to you, through whatever way that he chooses. And then you listen to the devil's words and think, oh, I didn't really hear that. Or they didn't really say that. Because you've been praying about something and somebody out of the blue walks up to you and says exactly. You, you know that that came from God. And you walk away and, and talk yourself out of the fact that that just even really happened because a total stranger came up to you. Oh, that, that, that didn't happen. Do you do that? Do you allow yourself stinking thinking? Because that's what it is. It's stinking thinking when we don't believe this word that God has given us. This isn't, this isn't something so difficult. It's so like, oh, we gotta, we got to unwrap all this stuff and there's all this mystery here. I'm not, I'm not saying that there isn't magnificent mystery in the Bible. Because there is. There's diamonds in here we haven't even begun to mine out yet. But God's waiting for a generation that He can hand them to. Because if you don't think His coffers are full of shining diamonds. Do you know what a diamond is, brothers and sisters? It's a piece of coal that was able to put up with the pressure. All the pressure. How well do you handle the pressure? Jesus took more pressure than he will ever ask you to go through. More pressure than you could ever even have. You don't even have the capacity, brothers and sisters, and I'm not talking, I'm talking about me too, to understand what he went through. When it says that he was tempted in all ways like we are, yeah, buddy. And way beyond what your thoughts could even imagine. Have any of you ever had omnipotent power? Imagine a guy that cut you off and you thought one bad thought about that fellow. What would he be? You ever watch Star Trek? They had the little phasers back in the day. <laughs> That's it. Brothers and sisters, 
We need to get right. That's the way it is. We need to get right. We need to believe God. It's just that simple. How much more can he do than he's done? What other could he give you? There's people that are fighting. They want something more than what this precious book gives us. But brothers and sisters, like I shared with that, that fine gentleman, you know, you can have the oil in the lamp. You can carry it around with you everywhere you go. Brothers and sisters, if you don't have this oil in your vessel, you have no light. This word is alive. Sharper than any two-edged sword, it says. What, what does it say? Cutting to the very dividing of what? The bone marrow? You know where that is? You know where your bone marrow is? It's deep in the heart of who you are. Without that, you crumble. I don't want to see anybody crumble. I want to see us all get right. Including myself. I, I don't know about you guys, but I struggle a terrible battle every single day. It's like my buddy B says. He says, we, we have nothing, we are nothing, and we give nothing. That's exactly it. I love when B says that. But God is everything, He has everything, and He gives everything. And he's, He wants to give to you more than you're willing to accept. More than you're even willing to ask. I know this church was closed the other day for last Sabbath. But this is a pretty good structure. This should be a safe place. This ought to be a place for people to go. And if we're going to build a new church, you know, I don't even want to be here for a few more years, but if we're going to build, we're supposed to build in a way that it's going to last, right? So we ought to build a place that's a structure that can stand where we don't have to keep away, but we can come to. Maybe even a place that has a generator. <laughs> I'll leave that all in God's hands, in the church's hands. But I, you know, the soul of the church, if we don't believe, brothers and sisters, if these things are just theories, like that woman said, she she was angry, not in a bad way, you know, it was her son that, and, and I, I didn't even mean to get into a confrontation, but it's the way it happened, and, and he, he spoke up, he, you know, sparked up, and I just gave him scripture. I, I, you know, I don't care how you think about, like, Walter Weiss. Some people don't like Walter Weiss, some people do like Walter Weiss. I don't care where you come on either side. But one thing I do very much respect about Walter White, and as far as I'm concerned, you can't argue with the man because he reads the Bible and then he reads the spirit of prophecy. And that's what he does. How do you argue with that? How do you argue with that? These things are not theories, brothers and sisters. This is the real deal. Jesus Christ didn't walk in a theory. He walked a real walk. And it was sinless. He wants to give you His righteousness. You could leave this church today and be sinless the rest of your life. But you could never measure up and you need Christ because you have been a sinner and you are a sinner. You follow what I'm saying? But we can still have this victory in Christ if we believe what he says. Do you think we can do that? I hope so. Our closing song is three left.
turn this dark world into a lighted place and make the darkness flee. I pray if you believe that and you believe the words that this Bible speaks, that you just raise your hand. Praise the Lord. All right, let us be in a spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today. We want to recommit our lives into believing you, to being focused upon you. Let our eyes be single, and though the distractions as they are many, with everything that the devil throws at us in a particular day, let us be able to be as Jesus was, focused upon you, so that we can see you working, and we can hear your words, and we can be mindful of our brother and sister that's going through struggles that we have no idea you know, we're so quick to judge people. But I pray that you give us a spirit of forgiveness, Lord. Let a spirit of forgiveness come upon us as this whole church so that we can love brother and sister like we ought. That we can see each other as better than ourselves. So that we can be protected from this evil nature that's so willing to crop up and take over. Lord, I pray that we would put it down and that your name would be glorified in every soul here. In Jesus' name. Amen.